Do you have much time for reading poetry? I do. Um, I quite often read poetry last thing at night. My wife's a very keen poetry reader. In fact, she goes to courses once a week, um, you know, from uh, 16th century through to the modern day, and she also goes to a course on Dante. Um, and I quite like reading poetry late at night because I don't think that's a good time to read uh, fiction because I think to get the best from a novel you need to read not less than 100 pages at a time. And you read, tend to read very short poems. Yeah, poetry. and you know, quite often late at night you're not really going to read for more than 15 minutes. So you can't read 100 yeah. pages of a novel, therefore a poem is, is, is better. Perfect. Yeah. What have you chosen for us today? I've chosen a poem um, by Sean O'Brien who is... Um, a contemporary poet. Uh, he teaches in Newcastle and this is a poem I came across a few years ago when I was judging a prize called the Forward Prize for Poetry and it's about uh, coal mining and the end of coal mining um, and it's it's a superb poem which it, it, it illustrates what poetry can do that prose can't. It, it summons up a whole world, a whole way of life it has a faintly political theme, but doesn't bang you over the head with it. It's immensely sad, but also rather noble. Uh, and you, you, couldn't, you couldn't sum it up in prose. It only works as verse. There's one word I should explain, uh, I had to look up, uh, which is the word noyade, which means a sort of forcible drowning, holding someone's head underwater. Yeah. And it's called Fantasia on a Theme of James Wright by Sean O'Brien. There are miners still in the underground rivers of Westmoor and Palmersville. There are guttering cap lamps bound up in the roots where the coal is beginning again. They are sinking slowly further in between the shiftless seams to black pools in the bed of the world. In their long home, the miners are laboring still, gargling dust, going down in good order. Their black braided banners aloft into flooding and fire damp there to inherit once more the tiny corridors of the immense estate they line with prints of Headley's coming home. We hardly hear of them. There are the faint reports of spent economies, explosions in the ocean floor, the thud of iron doors sealed once for all on prayers and lamentation, on pragmatism and the long noyade of a class which dreamed itself immortalized by want, if nothing else. The singing of the dead inside the earth is like the friction of great stones, or like the rush of water into newly opened darkness. Oh, my brothers, the living will never persuade them that matters are otherwise. History done. It's very powerful. It's good, isn't it? Great atmosphere. And yeah. Very vivid. And almost redolent of a world that once forgotten existed. Yes, and I like the idea of the coal beginning again as the sort of top carbon changes underground and the sort of miners themselves buried with it, their aspirations buried with it. The tiny corridors of the great estate too, as the sort of the mines underneath what was often, were often private estates in, in the north of England and so on before the mines were nationalised. It's, um, it, it's a marvellous poem, I think. And uh, written fairly recently. Yes, recently. It's, it's within the last ten years, yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Mm. Thank you.